What is going on, ladies? Hope you're having a great day. Just want to hop on here and talk about three tips to speed up your slow metabolism. Now, we're going to get into the meat and potatoes right away because I know you ladies are short for time, so give yourself three to five minutes to go through this. If you're feeling tired all the time, if you're feeling like no matter how much you do, you're not losing any weight, you know, no matter how much cardio you do, no matter how many foods you try to cut out, you're just stuck. All right. Some moms have reached out to me recently postpartum or maybe like post-divorce, right? And you're just trying to get yourself to a place where you feel comfortable in your body again. You know, you're, you're energized, you wanna be able to know exactly what to do and what to eat, and how much. So I wanna clarify just three simple tips to speed up your slow metabolism. Now, this is my client, Helen. When she came to me, she was in the exact same position. One, she had very low energy. Two, she was already working out on the left there. So in this photo right here, she was already working out, but she just wasn't seeing the results that she felt that she deserved to see. And so she's also an educational assistant, so she works all day with kids. Um, unfortunately, that also means that like her kids often get sick and things like this, or she's in an environment where a lot of kids are sick. And so she's been off and on with working out and not, yet she's still been able to get results like on the right side. Now, Helen's been working with me for two years, but she actually loves the process, which is why she's been with me for so long, is it doesn't feel like a diet, it doesn't feel like, you know, a workout program that you start until you see the results that you're looking for and then you, you stop. She actually enjoys this, so there's no reason to go back to the left photo here. Um, she just feels like a million bucks now, and she gets to keep all the foods that her family loves. So number one is as you get older, by default, you're going to move less, inevitably. And that's just because, well, we're going to lose lean muscle tissue, which I'll get into in number two, but we end up you know, coming home from work, and instead of us wanting to go to the gym, we kind of just want to cook dinner for the kids and then relax, chill out. You know, you feel like you didn't get a minute, so now you want to scroll on social media and kind of decompress. But what that does is instead of us uh, going out for a walk or instead of us being active, doing, you know, let's just say you and your husband like to play um I don't know, like a uh, pickleball, right? You go to your local pickleball place. I see a lot of people in their 30s, 40s, 50s really getting into pickleball and they're moving around now. They're more active. So maybe you guys getting out and doing something more often like you did in your 20s, like you did maybe in your early 30s. Well, if you're in your 40s or mid 30s right now and you're not doing much after work, you're tired and you're taking care of the kids, you're going to slow down your metabolism, aka the total amount of calories that your body burns in a day. Right, so your metabolism is literally just the total amount of calories that your body burns when you're sleeping, when you're breathing, when you're blinking, like I am now, talking with your hands, working out, exercising, digesting food, things like that. And so everything slows down by default as you get older. Okay, so one way that we can improve that is by moving more. So the clients inside of our program, we give them a step count goal using a Fitbit or an Apple Watch, or you can just download any step tracker on your phone as long as you keep it on you, and it'll track your steps on autopilot. It's not something you need to think about. As long as you have your watch on, as long as you have your phone on you, you will always be tracking your steps. <clears throat> And the best part is Jen and I can monitor how many steps you're getting in a day. So, you know, if you're hitting 5,000 steps a day right now, well, you're going to burn double the amount of calories that you currently are just getting to 10,000, which isn't as hard as you would think it is. It is right now because you have nobody holding you accountable to it and you don't see other women around you doing it. Uh, but if you did see all the women in our program doing it effortlessly on a daily basis, then your perspective would shift right away because it's like they're busy. I see that this mom has seven kids, so if she can do it, why can't I, right? Cool. Number two, so women 30 plus, this goes for men as well. We lose 10% of our lean muscle tissue every 10 years. So if you're already in your 40s, you've lost 10% of your lean muscle tissue if you haven't been lifting heavy weights. And when I say lifting heavy weights, are you going into the gym or are you going are you doing your workouts from home with dumbbells and progressively and focusing on progressively lifting a little bit heavier from one workout to the next? Because if you're not progressing with lifting heavier and you're just focused on burning calories, doing low, low weights, high volume to burn calories, just focus on a step count if you're trying to burn calories. And if you're trying to get your heart rate up, I heard uh, one of my mentors say this once and it was hilarious because it's so true. Whether or not you sweat and whether or not your heart rate is high, right? Your heart rate's beating really fast. That doesn't determine whether or not you're going to lose body fat, right? Um, you might as well just watch a horror movie. If you're going to watch a horror movie, that's going to increase your heart rate. But when your heart rate's beating fast because you're scared, that doesn't make you burn more calories. It doesn't make you, that's not what's going to determine whether or not you lose body fat. What makes you lose body fat 
is going to be in tip number three, so stick with me here. But all in all, you got to be lifting weights, queens. Pilates isn't going to do it for you. Do it for fun. If you enjoy Pilates, if you enjoy Zumba, do it for fun. In fact, I think Zumba is great for steps. Uh, but do whatever you do, I just challenge you to make sure that it's something you can stick to for the long term. Because you, you never want to – the most underrated advice that I'm going to give you is that um, too many people focus on doing things that they won't be able to stick to for a lifetime, and therefore that's why they don't see results forever. That's why they don't keep the results. They, they think too short term. They think, how do I get all this weight off for summer? How do I get all this weight off for the wedding in September and August? And they just do a bunch of stuff. And then, uh, and then September comes around, they can't stick to it any longer. They just can't do it. They're like, how long do I have to do this for? How long do I need to cut out all this food for? How long do I need to do all this cardio for? How long do I need to do these boot camp classes for? It doesn't need to be this way. Stick to a step count goal. That's something that'll serve you for the rest of your life is walking consistently and committing to being an active person like that woman that you see walks by your house every day or that same friend that you always know goes out for a walk with her dogs every day and stays in shape. She's walking a lot, right? But if she isn't toned and she's struggling with her weight, she's probably not lifting weights. So that's what you got to do. All right, number two is to lift weights so you can keep your lean muscle tissue so that your metabolism stays high. Number three, okay, eat more protein to speed up your metabolism. Number one, Protein is the has the highest thermogenic effect, meaning that when you're digesting, you're burning more calories all around the clock. So that's why uh, people get uh, meat sweats, right? You're you're consuming, uh, you know, steak, chicken, whatever, and maybe kind of start to sweat. Um, this is because your body has to work extra hard to digest it. Another thing that you can notice is that maybe your body is having a harder time digesting it and you're a little bit more gassy, which is why you should have some fiber because fiber helps break down food, right? It's got enzymes that help break down food. So, um, so yeah, protein is going to speed up your metabolism, the total amount of calories you burn a day. And second is it's going to preserve the muscle, like we talked about in step two, that you already have on your body. Um, and also, if you're eating in the right amounts, it's going to help you build muscle, which is also going to help increase your metabolism. So in short, ladies, well, before I get into that, let's talk about what protein you know sources are my favorite. Now, I purposely picked this photo because it doesn't even tell you. Like, this is so bad. Um, it says 200, uh, 20 grams of protein, salmon, raw. If you haven't yet learned how to track your macros or you haven't yet learned how to simply put salmon on a scale and put it on your, uh, on your plate, which only takes five seconds. And you're not, you know, if, if you're too lazy to do that, to simply have a scale that's in your kitchen at all times that when you go to eat, or maybe you carry it in your purse, I have some clients that do that too. You got to do what you got to do to get to your goals. But how are you supposed to know how much salmon to have to help you get 20 grams of protein? Like, are you supposed to look at this photo right here and be like, Oh, that's 20 grams of protein. And then pop up a piece of salmon and eyeball and be like, I guess that's 20 grams. So if you don't know what 20 grams of salmon looks like, all right, that's going to be somewhere around 150 grams of salmon. Right? If I go into my fitness pal right now real quick, my fitness pal, and I type in salmon. I've been doing this for quite a while. So salmon cooked. I always type in things cooked because it's going to weigh more if there's water in it and it's raw, right, which then wouldn't be as accurate. Salmon cooked. <clears throat> and so um, if we're talking 150 grams, that's 33 grams of protein. So really, all you would need is about 100 grams of salmon. But it doesn't tell you that here. Neither does it with any of the other meals. But here are the sources of protein that I personally like. Um, one thing that isn't on here is shrimp. Shrimp is already pre-cooked. Takes no time to cook at all. Very easy. Um, I also think that eggs aren't the best source of protein if um, only because the eggs have a lot of fat. So that's fine. There's nothing wrong with eggs. It's great. But just stay conscious of how many eggs you're actually having. I have four eggs for breakfast every morning, but I also am allowed to have 70 grams of fat, right? So it actually kind of works out for me. But if you're, you know, at the end of a fat loss phase, we'll just say, and you're eating 14, 13, 1200 calories at the very end of your fat loss phase, um, then Hey, you, you're not going to, you're not going to want, you're going to want to spare fat for something that's going to make you more filling. Okay. So, um, yeah, that ladies, that is it. That is all. Um, what else what I was, was I going to say here? So all in all, number one is as you get older by default, you move less. So let's increase that step count. All right. A uh, good place to start 7,000 steps, no matter where you're at. And if you're already hitting more than 10,000, then increase from there. Um, and if you're not losing weight already and you're, 
hitting past 12,000 steps, maybe you're a nurse. Well, then this shows us that it's mainly your nutrition that you're struggling with and also that you probably aren't lifting weights and therefore you're losing some muscle. Number two is again, you know, you, we got to lift weights at least three days a week, 30 to 40 minutes, upper body, lower body, just pick, you know, four exercises, uh, alternate between upper and then lower and then upper and then lower. That's four exercises done, lift heavy, take as much rest as you need in between your sets. And again, my, my tip for you guys is have at least one gram of protein. Take your goal weight, even better, take your goal weight and multiply that by 0 0.7. So wherever you feel like you're going to feel your best, because we don't really care about like being 130 pounds, we care about how you feel. So where do you think you'll feel your best, right? Pick that goal weight, multiply that by 0 0.7. That's your protein goal. That's what you should be hitting in a day and use my fitness pal for that. All right. So ladies, that is it. Hope you guys got a ton of value today. Uh, let me stop sharing my screen. and. Have a great Tuesday.